Another day, another video from Medicosis Perfectionalis. In the previous video, we have talked about the cytoskeleton. Today, let's talk about the components of the cytoskeleton. We have microfilaments, microtubules, as well as intermediate filaments. And let's get started. The most abundant thing in the cell is water. Second most abundant thing is protein. We have structural proteins and functional proteins. Structural proteins form the cytoskeleton. So I've told you in the previous lecture, the cytoskeleton is a network of fibrillar proteins synthesized in the ribosomes. Why? Because they are proteins. Organized into tubules called microtubules or filaments called microfilaments. They will determine the shape of the cell, aid in cell division, and they form bridge for organelles to move. Examples, you have actin in microfilaments and tubulin in microtubules. Indeed, the functions of cytoskeleton are numerous. It provides a structure for the cell, involved in muscle contraction, forms tracks for organelles to move on, cytokinesis, cell signaling, chromosome segregation during cell division, and provide a template for cell membrane construction. Three types of cytoskeleton, microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. Microfilaments, they are made of actin. Microtubules, they are made of tubulin. And intermediate filaments, they are different proteins depending on the tissue. Microtubules, they form cilia, they form flagella, and they form something called the centriole. Cool. We have alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. That's why the definition of cytoskeleton, network of fibrillar proteins organized into filaments, microfilaments, and tubules, microtubules. First, microfilaments, also known as actin filaments. They start as monomers combining together to form G-actin polymers and they combine together to form actin filaments. The actin filament is a double helix. By the way, what else is a double helix in your body? The answer is DNA. Microfilaments, what is the function? They provide track for movement, muscle contraction, cell movement or cytokinesis, this is fancy, intracellular transport or trafficking, endocytosis, there are two types of endocytosis, pinocytosis for small particles and phagocytosis for large particles. Cell division, they form cleavage furrows during cell division. Cell starts like this and then actinomycin ring and then form these cleavage furrows and then they divide into two cells and voila! We're done with microfilaments, so let's go to the second one, microtubules. They are hollow cylinders with alumen, no pun intended. Polymers of alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. Nine triplets of microtubules and you have centriole. Nine doublets plus two additional microtubules in the center, you end up with cilia or flagella. The doublets connect to the next doublet through dynein. Dynein, problem or a defect in dynein, this is Cartagener's syndrome. Very important. Microtubules can form cilia, flagella, or centriole. Let's talk about cilia. Latin, they mean eyelash. They are found in eukaryotes, nine doublets plus two central single microtubules. This is called nine plus two. There can be motile or immotile. Motile in some cells, they have multiple cilia, such as the trachea has the mucociliary escalator. So let's draw the trachea here. And here are the cilia. Let's say that there is like mucus or a foreign body or whatever. They will try to push that upwards until it exits your body, called extrusion. This is called mucociliary escalator, like the escalator taking you to the upper level of the mall. Okay. Also, fallopian tube has cilia to push the ovum. They need epithelial sodium channels to control the optimum fluid levels in the cilia. Problems with this channel is involved with diseases such as the famous ugly cystic fibrosis. Okay, so immotile cilia on the other hand, also known as primary cilia, they are in every single cell but only one per cell. Some of them are specialized such as your sensory organs, your eyes, 
they have rods or photoreceptors. They are made of cilia or they are a specialized type of cilia. Your nose has the dendritic knob of the olfactory nerve, which is the first cranial nerve. Again, this is a special type of cilia. If there is a problem with the motile cilia and fallopian tube, you can end up with ectopic pregnancy. Instead of having the baby or the zygote in the uterus, now you have it in the fallopian tube called tubal pregnancy which is a type of ectopic pregnancy this could be fatal a defect in primary cilium and renal tubule cells can lead to polycystic kidney disease which is a kidney fall of cysts or kidney stones also known as nephrolithiasis defect in dining arm this is cartagenar syndrome also known as primary ciliary dyskinesia or immotile cilia syndrome CFTR mutation in cases of cystic fibrosis, there is increased activity of the epithelial sodium channel or ANAC leading to decreased secretion of fluid. That's why kids with cystic fibrosis have very big problem with thick mucus. This is a big deal and also it's very terrible. Microtubules can form cilia, flagella or centurioles. This is the flagella. In Latin it means whip or lash like structure again nine plus two nine peripheral doublets two central single microtubules the function is locomotion the helicobacter pylori bacteria has flagella the sperm has a flagellum which provides a propeller like movement structurally cilia and flagella are identical the structure of cilia or flagella is the same. We have nine peripheral doublets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. They are connected by dining arms. Nixon, they have two types. So the doublet has alpha tubulin and beta tubulin, also known as A tubule and B tubule, same thing. Radial spokes to connect them to the center. Defect in dining arms, you end up with Cartagenar syndrome. So if you have 9 plus 2, you have cilia and flagella. If you have 9 triplets, this is centrioles. Two centrioles will form one centrosome. So this pink structure is the centrosome, and the two rods here are the centrioles. They will organize the microtubules. The microtubules will form the mitotic spindle to attach to this chromatid through something called kinato cores, these little dots. Of course, centriole is made of tubulin because it's a microtubule. The cytoskeleton is microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filament. So, third, intermediate filaments. They are stronger than microfilaments. Yeah, they are intermediate. They are not micro. They are larger. They are thicker. They form nuclear lamina, and depending on the type of the tissue, we have different types of intermediate filaments. In mesenchymal cells, we have a protein called vimentin. Epithelial cells, keratin. Neural cells, neurofilaments. Nuclear envelope, nuclear lamina, or lamin. Muscles, desmin. As you know, all of them ends in IN, which means they are proteins because intermediate filaments are part of the cytoskeleton and the cytoskeleton is made of proteins. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis and please, please be safe, stay happy and study hard. Until next time.